Hi, welcome to the mini lecture on learning and cognition. My name is Richard. In today's lecture, I am going to talk about the assessment of creativity. Okay, to get started, let me ask you a question, and you will have 30 seconds to think about it. How many uses you can think of for a brick or bricks? Alright, I know you've got a bunch of answers in your mind, and if you want to share them with me, please put them in the comments. So, what is this game? This is actually a part of a test called Divergent Thinking Test. Simply put, Divergent Thinking Test is a test that measures people's ability to come up with multiple responses to a question or multiple solutions to a problem. Although I don't know what your answers are, here are some answers given by the people who took the test before. Like building a house for yourself, building a church for the community, or you can dig a hole and make it a candle holder. Since it's heavy, it could be a paperweight, or you can use that as a weapon, or to build a brick barbecue, or to see if your bridge project can pass the weight test. If you want to prevent animals from opening a garbage bin, you can put a brick on the top of it. Or you can use it as a car stopper in your garage. There are many more answers, actually infinite number of answers. Some are common answers most people can think of, and some are very rare. Since this is a test, there must be a way to produce a score. How do we score these responses? In fact. Divergent thinking test produces more than one divergent thinking scores each time you take the test. The most straightforward one is a fluency score, which is the number of all the responses you give to each question. In this example, you get a fluency score of 9. But someone would argue that quality is more important than quantity. What if you come up with only one answer, but you are the only person who has this idea? So, a second score we often use in divergent thinking test is originality score, which is the number of answers that are unique. How do we quantify uniqueness? At first, people use objective scoring method, which is to count all the answers that are given by less than, let's say, 1%, 10%, or 20% of all the test takers. In this example, maybe the car stopper and candle holder meets this criteria. And then you get an originality score of 2. But some others don't agree with it because they think that creativity sometimes cannot be assessed using objective criteria. A simple example is how we can measure the uniqueness of Picasso's painting. It's not so ridiculous if we use a scale and uh, give scores to his painting. This is when subjective scoring method comes into play. This scoring method requires that we invite external judges to read the originality of each response. And then we average the scores, obtain from each response, and we get your originality score. Then we have another issue. Since this is subjective, how can we trust the judge? Who can be the judge? To resolve this issue, usually several experts in a certain um, area would be invited or hired to evaluate the creativity of each response. It seems that the more judges we hire, the more reliable the scores are. This scoring method is also called the consensual assessment technique. A third direct thinking score that is often used in the test is flexibility meaning the number of conceptual categories you can come up with. In this particular example, house, church, and the brick barbecue all belong to the building category. 
and when you use brick as a paperweight to pass bridge weight test or to put on a garbage bin, you consider it as something that is heavy. This is why we may put these three uses into one category. Well, you can disagree with me because sometimes categorization is quite subjective, and the rest of the uses belong to three different categories. And then you get a flexibility score of five. You get the idea. So we have three types of score in divergent thinking test: fluency, originality, and flexibility. So far, we have mainly focused on divergent thinking test. And here comes the question: Does divergent thinking test really measure your creativity? Of course not. The opposite of divergent thinking is called convergent thinking, meaning the ability to come up with single correct answers. A majority of the knowledge tests we take in our schools are actually convergent thinking tests. But you don't think they can measure your creativity, right? That doesn't mean creativity does not involve convergent thinking. In many situations, when you have to be creative about something, you need to choose among all the potential solutions the best one. That's when convergent thinking or evaluative thinking comes into play. The problem with most of our school tests is that the situations, the questions, or conditions are all well defined, and usually there are no other ways to solve the problem. Of course. This is understandable, given the time and effort needed to score creative responses. Still, in real-world situations, problems are not always clear. Situations are not well defined, and you don't know exactly what you need to attack the problem. And you have to figure out all the things by yourself, instead of searching conventional means. Maybe we could use some creativity in this situation. And this is how creative problem solving emerges. Let's use an example here. This time, I'm going to change the brick use question to a creative problem situation. Here it comes. Now you are in a sales job interview, and you have just graduated with a bachelor degree in business. You really want this job. The interviewers then give you a brick and ask you to impress them as best. As you can. What are you going to do? Well, if you need some time to think about it, that's fine. This is not as easy as answering how many uses you can think of for bricks, because you need to evaluate your solutions by putting them into the context, which is a sales job interview here. And there seems to be no correct answer to this question. Even the interviewers. Do not know what might impress them most, and how do you approach this problem? You have to figure it out by yourself. Everyone has his or her own styles. See, this is how our daily creativity problem situation looks like. And of course, there are other ways to assess your creativity, like achievement survey asking about what kind of creative achievement you have made. This is common in creative professions such as designers and artists. Sometimes people would put their creative achievements in CV, but some job does not explicitly require creativity components in CV. So it is very possible that you will encounter this sort of questions in your job interview if the employer is looking for creativity in their job applicants. And personality tests can also be used because sometimes we may not have the chance to do creative work due to a variety of reasons. But personality test could tell people if you have the potential to think and work creatively. Well, some research has shown that openness to experience is highly correlated to creativity achievement. Maybe this can be a good starting point. All right, let's go back to the question: Which creativity test? Can we trust? The answer may be not any single one. To truly understand somebody's creativity, perhaps we need more than one measures. Usually, three assessment tools are recommended for the evaluation of one's creative abilities. Okay, wrap up time. 
What kind of scores are usually employed by divergent thinking test? What does divergent thinking mean? What does convergent thinking mean? Is knowledge test a type of convergent thinking test or divergent thinking test? What are other ways to evaluate creativity in addition to divergent thinking test? Thanks for watching the video. Hope you like it. If you are interested, please subscribe my channel. More to come. Bye bye.